Hey, how's it going, guys? Crusty old crow here. Would you look at this beautiful bird? Look at this MF right here. Can't find a thing wrong with this thing. Hey guys, welcome to the Tactical Perspective. I am the Crusty Old Crow, uh, and I am going to show you some things today and put my Tactical Perspective on it. And I know you guys like the last videos I did when I was outside, and I like to be outside. So I decided to get outside again today. God, that's healthy, ain't it? So I'm listening to some, some RL Birdside. It's called Going Down South. Hmm. I am going down south. I'm heading out to Joe Fast. And I'm feeling good about it, guys. But I gotta, gotta remember that algorithm can pick up if you play a little bit too much sound bite. So guys, which figure am I doing today on the Tactical Perspective? I'm doing number 117. I am doing the Techno Viper. And if you guys are watching this show and have been watching my show, you know, I call it Grimace. I think this is a squeegee kid in the Grimace outfit at McDonald's. I was not a fan of this figure at all. Nor was I impressed by what I was seeing about it. Although, I had a hint. You know, Ryan Crow, pardon me. Pardon me. Secret identity spell edit, no? Um, yeah, no, uh, everybody was telling me I was wrong. They kept saying, you're wrong. You are wrong, Crow. Wrong! And I was like, okay, man. Okay, I'm wrong. Uh, so number 117 comes to us. And guys, I didn't pull up the file card today. I apologize. Uh, I'm just going off the consensus over here because really I had not much of an interest in here. But you know what? While I'm here, I might as well pull up that file card and just have a little looky loo, right? So G.I. Joe file card because you guys know here on Tactical Perspective, to me, that is the absolute start point of all investigative work as to whether or not Hasbro has created a character that actually reflects what they were in the time and uh if they put any insights and all of that into it uh all that stuff so i've got his file card up here right now i'm just gonna call up one that i can actually read uh there we go let's see if i can read that baby there we go so it says techno viper which is a cobra battlefield technician Modern battlefields involve expensive, complicated machines, and it is inevitable that these machines sustain enemy-inflicted damage, succumb to driver error, or simply break down of their own accord. Very true. Uh, it is the mission of the Techno Vipers to provide field maintenance and support and, the, and combat engineer capability to the frontline Cobra troops. Techno Vipers can repair his tanks, build bridges, and retrieve large, heavy machines from seemingly inaccessible places. Interesting. Retrieve large, heavy machines from seemingly in inaccessible places. Interesting point to make at the end of that. I am, hmm. 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 Do, do, do. All right. Uh, just because the Techno Vipers carry wrenches and jacks, don't underestimate them. They work their way up from the ranks of Vipers and each is qualified Cobra infantrymen. They are also function as sappers. I'm sorry. They also function as sappers and are always called on as the first wave in assaulting a heavily fortified position. So yeah, these guys are engineers. Chimo. Uh, Chimo is um, it's a First Nations word that the engineers here in Canada pass around to each other. It means friend, buddy. You understand? You got me? Chimo? Yeah, buddy. Chimo. Um, I am not an engineer, but I did do a lot of training with them. And I had to ask, why are you always saying Chimo? Chimo. <laughs> uh nonetheless uh at least i'm I, that's how i remember him explaining the origins of the word so i'm gonna call this guy chimo viper uh but uh you know the the standard golly gook on the side still applies you got your qr code and you got your primary combat functions your pcf zero and all on the side i i you know this week i've got to get on hasbro.com through here and see if they've given any of this relevance but i feel like they haven't i feel like we're just going back to that web page on the back they want you to pay attention to that data pad and i did have a look it is worth paying attention to and the backpack and uh yeah okay we'll pay attention to the backpack as well but really they're just, they're just saying this is where you'll slide some kit okay just like with barbecue this is a plug and play kind of backpack and it's also a slip in and lock so 
very good to know uh i can see that by looking at the box i don't necessarily need to know if that was a feature but then again what i would have featured instead of these is the utility of the cable how it could be used for different things like attaching to pneumatic tools or the weapon that's where i would have drawn the attention to here um but it is what it is they chose it the way they did uh they've represented on the side art that it's attached to the gun and on the back art to a pneumatic tool right so okay uh, but it is number 117 in the line. I did pick this up today. I saw it at GameStop. And uh, what can I say? Low-hanging fruit. Rare opportunity to get this, I thought. Until I popped by Walmart in an area I've never been to. And I saw about 13 of these sitting on the shelf there. But they were at the Walmart standard price. Which was much higher than what I normally pay through GameStop anyway. So I did just buy the one uh, to see if I could put it in my hands and see what people see and there was one thing i hadn't really accounted for that i did like about the techno viper once i saw it but it needed a lot of help getting there so i'm gonna bring you over and we're gonna review that techno viper don't forget to like share subscribe if you're enjoying these reviews guys all right so here we find chimo the techno viper he's growing he's too old let go nobody listens to techno but he does read a readout screen and he does have stuff on his uh on his uh, wrists on either side, which are very impressive. Uh, there's a lot to go with on the arms section. It draws your eyes right away, but you know me, I always like to start with that head to toe. So let's have a look at this head. We'll bring him closer to the camera. And he almost reminds me of like Shredder with those glowing eyes, Shredder from the Turtle Lore, or some sort of Halloween-esque kind of character. I just couldn't take this look seriously with the silver and purple, that was all it. I, th I feel like the the co the MMS uh, 788 variant for this character is something I wish I had, but I didn't uh, order the MMS. I didn't really have an interest in it for my Cobra collection as much as I wanted the Joe one for my Joe collection, and shelf space would only normally tell me to get one or two. Now, I don't know, is these scratches on the side of mine natural to the model, or was that something we all have, or is that just what mine had because I, that came as is and if so i'm like i have a real bad paint problem here because but i do see little yeah I, I see little evidence of any other damage he's taken besides to the helmet so i'm like the figure itself unboxing came out fantastic no real issues um you know having watched a couple of other guys play around with theirs and talk about it like aaron and and uh three star draw and i think uh i think didn't triple c do one as well i'm sure i thought i saw him talk about it but um i didn't overly have any issues getting all the kit out and together i thought it was well put together as far as kit wise but that scratch just i was like what's going on here how did this get here uh i'm just not tracking how it got there so and it, it just doesn't seem like a natural kind of scratch to have it seems like a slip of the silver paint app that they were using on the the band here because i have a hard time believing that the base paint of this under all of that is silver i feel like it's probably a dull gray plastic at best or, or a purple dyed plastic maybe but not silver there would be no reason for it so it's just interesting that that's happened but uh i won't let it detract from what i'm seeing i do feel it's a print error and that's unfortunate but you know i wasn't i wasn't overly attached to the character anyways so i kind of like that he's flawed now he's now he belongs with me because he's flawed anyways working his way down uh, i am partial to the shoulder pads that they used for this model uh in that instead of wrapping them around or sealing them into the arm joints anyway like they did with the old baroness and other figures where the rubber was kind of really infringing on on things how it was i'm trying to think of another good example where the shoulder pads really obstruct but uh, i can't off the top of my head but i'm pretty sure somebody out there probably can think of a figure or two where there was that but they've got them so that they can be offset a little bit they're clips instead of bands around so you don't break your bands i guess or or for what have you, for whatever design reason, it's probably also so they can reuse the upper body for later Viper designs like the Heat Viper, or perhaps, um, you know, this might be the base for the Saw Viper with a vest over it, I don't know, but they probably want to have the shoulder pads uh, interchangeable without interruption for the arms, arm molds. 
Uh, I'm partial to the body uniform. I just don't like the colors. I don't, I'm not fond of this Prince and the Revolution look. Uh, and you guys know, I love that Chappelle shit. Uh, and I love that, that whole Prince gimmick. We talked about it recently, but as far as intimidating a character or anything like that, uh, it doesn't really work for me because the only thing it allows me to, to really think of when I look at it is, is he trying to hide in the darkness somewhere? Why was purple the choice? Uh, but then I realized, you know what it is? It's because you put him with a bunch of Cobra Troopers and he stands out, but he looks like he belongs because he's purple against the blue. And all this time, you know, I was looking at my 788 going, you would stand out terrible against them. You know, Snow Troops, terrible against them. Python Patrol, terrible against them. Uh, but yes, the traditional blue Cobra infantry, this works for. And he would really stand out against the Crimson Guard. I'm not quite sure how he's going to fold in and make himself visible um palatably with uh the iron grenadiers but we'll see i mean of course i'm more interested in them in those darker tones the purple just seems all about fashion and less about purpose and function at this point and as does the silver uh th this is what i i remember now dee, 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 dee. it's a power ranger look that i'm looking at here this guy seems like he's a power ranger villain uh set to i'll get your resort on you know um but it is what it is yeah um it's very creative and i understand this character was very popular with the generation after mine right i was departing joe just uh just around the time tiger force was being introduced uh maybe a little bit before that even uh but i remember all the characters and everything and i was fond of a lot of them but some of the vipers that were coming after we after we crossed into the Viper threshold, once that Viper gate opened, some of the Vipers weren't as appealing to me and Techno Viper was one of them. I do believe I had a Heat Viper too. And I was even like, this guy's cool, but he just doesn't feel like a Viper, right? Um, I wish they, for supports, you know, like they left the Vipers as the infantry they are and for supports they had come up with maybe like what they did with Snow Serpents, like use the term Serpents. Like I wish there was a, a distinguishable uh, naming convention for how the Cobra is broken down sometimes. Uh, I definitely see an effort to do so, but sometimes it just doesn't make sense why a certain character is, uh, is labeled a certain way when you'd think it'd be so easy as to look at it and go, what are we naming it? Okay, do we have one of those? Okay. And I give you the example of the Python Patrol officer, for example. Like, what was the reluctance to make one a trooper or a uh, assault? infantry right like you did with the other traditional stuff anyways uh yeah big fan of shoulder pads and the gauntlets i'll bring that up closer to show you here guys the gauntlets are very interesting uh in that there's definitely stuff written out on that screen uh there's schematic data there uh, it says cobra at the top it's got the icon it looks like it's got a power level monitor on the lower bar it's about halfway full and in between it's just a little bit of script uh that clearly i can't read and then on the other gauntlet, it's a separate thing entirely. Uh, on this one, you have a dimensional disc-like chart with a globe in the middle. Kind of like an AI's brain would look in the movie Tron or something. Uh, like Kind of like Saturn, where it's rising above its rings, basically. And then more script in the bottom. And then, of course, he's got that detachable holographic screen, which again shows uh, the Cobra emblem in the middle. Kind of looks more like the Mars Industry variant of a Cobra emblem. And then uh, some power levels again on the upper right charts. Some sort of chronometer, speedometer, or ometer of some sort up in the upper, upper left, that circular shape, and then more levels being monitored on the the left bottom corner there so just constantly monitoring equipment and and, and bandwidths and report line and whatever you know like just everything that can be reported electronically is clearly being patched through this guy is a walking walking wi-fi 5g beast of a man um the torso yeah big old cobra emblem uh, I like that they didn't bother going subtle with a smaller one. What's the damn point when you're making them purple and silver anyways? You've already crossed that line of subtlety, so you might as well just let it all hang out to the left and swing that baby around. Um, the, the hose going to his stomach I thought was a nice ad because they at least 
force themselves to commit to painting the the hose that come with this thing as opposed to going with just the black uh the black connector hose a la barbecue um if you remember i think his hose was all black at least on the mad marauders i believe it is and anyways there was just no accent to say that this is a steel reinforced cable it might as well be a rubber toilet uh con connecting pipe like you just don't know what kind of thing you're getting with the black hoses at least when they paint them silver and you see them connect to a piece of sci-fi gun that you have here with this thing um you at least know that thing's probably packed with fiber optic cables all sorts of cables locking mechs it's a very advanced cable and i appreciated that they committed to it that way um yeah no other issues the pants are very plain i'm actually surprised and i was also very surprised a little bit at the design of the boots like the knee pads and the pants i'm like oh yeah less is more good job you made it subtle you didn't throw in a wacky cam a silver stripe line or something ridiculous uh you didn't try to cover it all up with just more leg kit than he needs like it would have been easy to excuse more tools on that bare right thigh but they didn't do it and i appreciate that they didn't do it because they had the holster on the left uh, that's more than enough. And then, uh, you know, those legs, the, it looks like ninja wraps, almost Egyptian or like Stargate or Fifth Element design swirl ninja wraps. And I was like, okay, now what's going on? Right? Like, why did you choose those particular design leg wraps? They kind of don't fit with the the linear and triangular designs that you had at play with everything going on above the knees. Right, if you look at the Cobra uh, dark purple versus the light purple, that's a triangular slope downwards. If you look at the mask, everything is angular in such a way and triangular, even up to the crown of his head where the uh, stripe joins, triangular. And then we get down to the boots and it's like, yeah, man, like Zen design, dude. This is a tsunami wave, bro. And I'm like, what is going on? But I digress. Ah, uh, here, let's do some stuff with the backpack. But there it is, guys. I'll change you some camera angles here in a second. Backpack, tools, tanks, connector hoses, two choices, left or right. There we go. Let's see it. Here, he presents me Mjolnir, his pneumatic hammer. Witness, he is worthy. He can touch this. Yeah, so he's got that pneumatic hammer, which he would use on his tank for banging track uh and you know driving in the the things that are meant to do right like we say in the army use the correct tool correctly oh no stop 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 that all right let's see a different tool yeah the techno viper has that pneumatic claw this is perfect for reaching things on the top shelf or ripping wires out of, you know, loose assemblies on Joe vehicles. It's also the worst practical joke you could play on someone in the locker room is to snatch a towel from the low grab with one of these. Yet, it's all right. No, in real sense, you would use this, use this to undo the lock nuts and all the other things. It would rip metal off the side of the his tanks or a Joe vamp. Uh, you know, again, a very purposeful tool for the engineer to have. Uh, so no issues with it whatsoever. I just going to switch over to the next tool and we'll be done this. But yeah, the tool selection so far I'm impressed with. And it's, so you, you definitely know it's got the function for a sapper, right? So we're doing good so far, boys. But notice I, I don't have the rifle up because I just kind of haven't really looked and seen. But I don't really see anywhere for him to sling it, even using my favorite way to put it right through the trigger grip. Uh, so I'm just holding that off to the side. Same as that techno slate. I don't want to lose those out here in the wild. So let's go have a look at this last tool. All right. So now we're at that actual WTF moment when it comes to the last tool. Because even our friend here, Chimo, he's looking at this one and going, okay, I hooked this one up to the hose. And it's a grip like the one I just had up. This one's wider. They are a little different. Only slightly different just different enough and the question we have is okay we can accept that they have different functions for what they are meant to remove place pull tear whatever um why go with such similar tools when you still had other tools in the drawer yes 
Cover Girl and Clutch would have us all believe we love getting wrenches with our Joes. It's fine. I do like the odd wrench. Thank you for including them. But you've included one already with the Techno Viper. What about a drill? What about a welder attachment? What about a dust buster? I don't care why two of the claw attachment seems odd to me and um it's not it's not ruining the figure i think the loadout is fantastic for the creativity and everything <clears throat> that's definitely not my issue with it it just seemed like um could you not think of anything else oh god like even glow sticks yeah it's that damn techno music again get it off and so here we have techno Vapa again looking at his techno screen and he's uh, apparently looking up that pistol. But that pistol is amazing. Oh, dear, we've got this weird music going on. He's always oh, surfing iTunes. He's looking for techno music. Get it. Don't cut the signal. Cut the signal. Okay. Yeah. There we go. No more techno music. I don't want to get any dings. Uh, the joke is done. Anyways, that pistol, kind of a fancy little pistol. Not not dead set against it clearly got the laser attachment and then a very interesting breech design up top for the ejecting rounds i have to think that this is simply just a laser pistol and not a pistol pistol i don't see any ammo to slam home in it pretty sure this is a sci-fi pistol for a sci-fi guy and that's fine by me bring out sci-fi by the way just do it get them out there you've already made enough figures out now you've had all sorts of criticisms just make sci-fi just do it do it do it do it anyways this isn't about sci-fi it's about techno viper and i gotta give techno viper a rating let's do that now and the truth of the matter is that techno viper is one of two figures i bought today this did not make me feel better today buying it i was satisfied that i bought it but i had seen something else that i would have felt a lot better about and i waited all day and i said you know what i'm gonna go back and if it's there i'm gonna buy it you know Going through a pretty selfish time right now. And uh, getting towards going on trips. But uh, nonetheless, uh, so I'll review this figure. And I'm going to place them in a little scene to get you ready for the next figure I review. It'll be an interesting one. Uh, and I'm not going to allude to who it is. Because I don't think we'd call it, guys. Anyways, uh, the Techno, Vi Techno Viper. I'm still not swayed towards this character in much ways it's not as terrible as i thought it would be uh when i got it in my hands i really was not a fan of the color sets or anything but i do see a place for them on my shelf just the one don't need many it's cool i like having an engineer attached to things everything like that um but we'll give it a play grade right now and i would have to say the play grade's pretty high when you get this many accessories and choices and that cable's compatible with everything that it does and this character has so much posability because it doesn't have any real obstruction on that torso to keep it from doing its necessary bends to do all the posing you need it to do as an engineer and one thing i would remind you is with these tools they can also disarm bombs uh you know work uh any kind of demolitions would fall under the guise of an engineer as well so these guys could work well with firefly on your shelf as well uh but they also work very well with the blue uh, so playability with all those tools and options and the way they kind of walk into a couple of themes, I would give them at least a four. 4.5, in fact, just to be generous with the character I don't like and the fact that you've got four accessories that go with this hose, right? And that's pretty damn good. And yes, I got criticized by D-Mac for criticizing how many weapons uh, Scarlet came with the other day, but it was, and, but it was just more like she didn't need the you know all the the rifles and everything like that you did good you almost oversold the amount of kit you could have been humble saved on this figure and we would have accepted but you threw all this kit at it and some of it you couldn't even hold like the pistol and then others it was just now she, now her back she looks like she's carrying the same load as as uh grunt was she a retro figure why didn't she have the retro backpack, that little humble day bag that they all had back in the day, right? That little, little day bag. It was just a flap right in the back. Anyways, um, not about Scarlet either. This figure gets a high grade, like I said, a 4.5 for the playability. Now for the tack sense, I have to look outside the colors. Uh, yeah, I'm okay. He's working at night. Yeah, okay. He stands out with a uniformity issue amongst the blue troops. And we'll see that when I end this video on the scene that we're getting ready for. Uh, but I can't ding it for the tack, but 
the the tech is probably the best thing going for it. And I'm just talking about his situational awareness monitors on both wrists and the ability to project information and receive information and this nice representation and the way it is. Pretty sure he's got a Stark-like display inside his helmet screen as well. Uh, you can almost get, and like I said, all these tools actually do serve a purpose, but I feel like it was a wasted opportunity to kind of repeat a wrench one. Like, yeah, either way, I don't care. Change the shape, give me a drill, give me flame, give me whatever. Um, pressure washer, just like I said, squeegee. Uh, you know, it don't matter. Tick a monster, a feather. Uh, I just didn't need that repeated. But yeah, okay, I'd go with a four on the tack. I think four, four is fair. Um, it's interesting when you look at the helmet, just the way it's designed, it's just begging to be pulled apart one day. And from this angle, I want to go... Skrillex, drop the beat. You know, like, mm. but maybe that's what it is. He kind of reminds me of a hokey Vader. I don't know. There's so many things he reminds me of, guys. But for, you know what? Talk. Yeah, four, 4.5. It doesn't really matter. I, you know, like this character's got a lot going for it. I'm just not fond of it. And I'm seeing another paint chip app right by the black on my shoulders here. Just along this ridge, he's got some paint damage as well. It's like something went haywire. It's almost like the needle, like some sort of machinery slipped when he came off the line uh, and the paint got on there or it damaged it somehow. But unless it's meant to look like that and all you guys have it, but I don't see any indication on the box. Now, uh, let's go with that creativity grade. Just because I don't like the colors, just because I think the helmet looks ridiculous. Um, I'm going to take a whole point off of it. And then I'm going to give 0.5 back. This is a very creatively designed figure. Whether I like it or not, i got to bring that rifle back over here and put that in his hands, guys. I humbly admit this, uh, this received high praise from everybody that I didn't want it to get because I just did not like this character's look right there was just something it just all vibed wrong but it just that's how i felt about it maybe i want something a little bit more relatable to the other stuff than this was to me but no you guys got yourselves a good figure i have a good figure in my collection he's not my favorite he's not my least favorite i tell you he goes together way better than barbecue as i see it but let's uh let's go put him over to this scenery and we'll we'll talk about the next one Okay, guys, it seems we have a checkpoint set up here, and they needed a, a Techno Viper to run the analytics on the vehicles that they pull through here. So, uh, oh boy, I wonder who's going to roll through on this one. Uh, but it's going to be a new character that I'm going to introduce you to. And, oh, geez, looks like they've got some Overwatch that we need to worry about. But uh, stay tuned, guys. My next uh, figure review, it'll pick up where we left off here.